Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... My name is Sesame Encarta. Don't forget it. Yeah, um... We watched a, uh... Movie... You could call... That... That the, um... That... That, that hurt my head. Um, but it, it's a film that the producers said that Joshua and the Promised Land <laughs> comes as a heartwarming tale for the whole family in the tradition of C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien about yeah. the courage one learns from trusting God. As a result, and... and as a result, finding the ability to overcome many of life's problems. Join young Joshua Carter, don't know where his last name came from, on an epic dream adventure from the parting of the Red Sea as the Hebrews, Hebrews escape from Egypt through 40 years in the wilderness, finally to fall, finally to the fall of the sinful city of Jericho. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Is that what we watched? Uh, I mean, that's a very loose interpretation of what we watched. Sure. I, I would say mm, what we saw was a fever dream mixed in with maybe a little bit of ketamine and PCP of a Christian fundamentalist, maybe a little bit of huffing some gasoline and paint as well. And then this is what, you know, we saw. We saw anthropomorphic lions, uh, walruses, tigers, both white and orange striped. Uh, pandas. Pandas. Um, a weird creature that looked like it was both part bear and monkey at the same time. All bipedal, mind you. No, and, uh, also, you know, the, the Moses looked like he was part panther, part monkey, part... Yeah. And he was gray. Yeah. He was all gray. And um and all all the all the bad animals, bad guys are either black or red. So that's you know a coincidence, I'm sure. And um, you know, and anyway, yeah. Uh woof. I don't know what we saw. It was it was it was definitely visuals. We did well, see. I mean, I mean recently the, the Black Panther two movie came out. Yeah. And true. um this reminded me so much of it. Oh yeah. The special effects were like uncanny, like, uh, <laughs> like definitely like BP2 definitely stole from uh, um, BP2, you know, like British Petroleum, too. Wait, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no, BP2 no. <laughs> really, really took like their inspiration from yeah. the animation of this film. By the way, this <laughs> film took four years to make. Granted, the guy who wrote the script and did the animation was the same guy named Jim Lyon, by the way. And the yeah. main character is a lion, so that's interesting. But um, I don't so, know. I know he was doing double duty, but four years. He's also one of the voice actors too. So yeah, one of the voice actors. But I'm thinking, I I sure hope by four years, what they meant was he only spent like maybe 15 minutes a day on each day to do it because I I looked I up imagine. I looked up the estimated budget for the movie. Yeah, and it was three hundred and fifty thousand. That's wild. And wow. Uh -huh. I I was thinking maybe at most like 30,000, but that's that's insane. I, uh, I, I I was thinking like, you know, I empty out my pockets right now and you know there's some lint and maybe a bubblegum yeah. wrapper in there and a couple maybe of coins. You could, I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> but what we saw, though, I think is it, unironically probably probably the greatest movie I've ever seen in my life, uh, unintentionally. But uh, it's <laughs> it's just perfect. It, like it's one of those movies where I finally saw a movie that was so bad it was it was good to make fun of and it wasn't just boring because like everything about this movie is like the person who made it like genuinely thought like i nailed this like this is my life's work this is the best thing ever and it's just so terrible and but like the fact that it was made with so much sincerity yeah i mean just like my, makes my, it that much better my thing that i always say is they they made a movie they yeah it I is mean, a movie yep it's better than it, it it didn't exist before he started his four year journey into making this movie yeah i mean <laughs> that's that's true and you could buy it on dvd or watch it for free on youtube by the way as of right now the video that i saw from has 666,000 views so 666 that should be interesting right oh, there nice. but uh, uh yeah and um, oh God! So you want to talk about what happens in this this um? um first, okay, map. yeah. Um, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> well, you you wouldn't give your general thoughts. You want yeah, to do that? I'm just Can trying you? to think of what my general thoughts were because my general thoughts were is like it, it was an hour long, less than an hour long, and it felt like it was like longer than something by. C.S. Lewis or J.A.R. Tolkien. <laughs> well, that was intentional because of the whole 40 years in the desert thing. It was supposed to feel like you were, you know, that you were there. I would have been more impressed if it took him 40 years to make the movie. Yeah, me too. Meh. Jim Lyon knew what he was doing. He was, he, yeah. it was all planned, you know. He, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, I, so like, Just, I mean, just to let you know that, I mean, I know it didn't cost a lot of money, but, okay, so, this came out in 2004. I, Ice Age came out in 2002. Um, Madagascar in 2005. Dinosaur in 2000. Shrek in 2001. Shrek 2, the same year as this movie. Hoodwinked, hey. 2005. The Incredibles, 2004. Finding yeah. Nemo, 2003. Monsters, Inc., 2001. I'm just looking up CGI movies that came out around this time. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's true. Yeah. I mean, Barbie and the Nutcracker came out in 2001. And that's I, a I classic. Wanna, I want to see that. Yeah, <laughs> that if that, we could like mix this in with that movie. That would be really cool. Yeah. And um, Barbie and the Nutcracker. Um, so when that first came out, my niece was really young. She's now twenty five, and um, I remember her watching it a few thousand times. <laughs> And the uh, the way the sound was in it, anytime like music played, it blew your eardrums out. But the dialogue was so low you could barely hear the Barbie talking. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was that one. It was one of these Barbie movies. But yeah, so <laughs> yeah. But anyways, similar thing happens in this movie at times. But um, shit. Yeah, um so 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 let's get into the plot here. What happens? Um I'll let you kind of walk us through this Ugh. to begin. Yeah, yeah. cuz I'm itching to talk about this. So so the movie begins with some water, you know, great great effect of water and the sound effect all perfect. And then uh for the logo. And then we go in. Yeah. Yeah, the logo which the sound looks like just some regular font they got from like Microsoft Word or some shit. And then uh mm. about in distribution or something like that and then uh or fountain films and then um we see joshua you know our hero playing with like some wooden sword making these weird grunting sounds as he's doing it and he 
He, he's a child well, lion. Yeah, he's a child, and he's, a like, anthropomorphic running, anthropomorphic like, lion. Yeah, <laughs> that bipedal, and, and as he's doing this, there's, like, picture on the wall or like a moving picture of a wall of like another lion with the sword fighting something and he's i think that's a stand- tv huh i think that's a tv oh yeah tv and he's i guess reenacting what he sees on tv or whatever yeah and then you know his dad walks in a door he like throws his sword away for some reason and he's like hi dad and his dad just like pick up your stuff joshua and then he, like, walks away into, like, the kitchen. And he's like, ugh. Okay, then, like, immediately his parents just start getting into an argument. Mind you, they're arguing about, like, regular, like, human things, even though they're both all lions. Uh-huh. And, then, like, she's like, oh, I, you said you are going to clean out the den. Uh, oh, their house is a den. You get it? Because they're lions. Oh, the lion's den. Yeah. Even though it just looks like a regular house. <laughs> like, there's nothing in it that... Like screams lion. There, there was no purpose whatsoever for these characters to be animals. No, no, there's nothing at all. They just took a waste of time. And then, uh, and they're arguing is like, you said you, you're all you care about is playing and working on that car of yours. And he's like, today's my day off. I do what I want. I'm like, okay. So we just got like an angry, bitter father figure here uh-huh. who just like cares about his car more than his family. He comes off as an angry drunk. He does. It looks like he's about to, like, abuse her because he growls and, like, clenches his fist and he just walks away. And then Joshua, like, is, you know, scared and awkward. So he goes in the kitchen and she, his mom runs into him and she's getting all mad. Like, uh, Joshua, just get out of the way. I'm trying to fix dinner. So Joshua goes upstairs, you know, crying, basically, because his parents are total pieces of shit. And then he goes in his bed to take a nap. And, oh, boy. This is where the movie gets really good. So we have essentially two narrators of the film, which I don't understand why that needs to be done. Uh, we got this weird purple pig looking thing with the bow tie. Don't yeah, even he know kind of starts out, starts out the movie. He's like a, yeah, it, it looks like piglets, you know, I don't know, drunk uncle or something. I, and, I yeah. have no idea yeah. what they thought this was gonna be or what they what i don't know so he narrates the film but then there's this other character who's sort of like a narrator himself so it just becomes really confusing so this dude this weird like wolf like ghost staticky creature like how you know it to me he looks like a wolf kind of i don't know yeah and then, it's uh, hard to tell he it's like it looks like he's all staticky like he's like it's really hard to describe. You gotta see the image. It's hard to describe. Because I think he's supposed to be like a uh, a guardian angel. Yeah, and so he shows up, and he just starts like looking at all of Joshua's toys in his room, and then like I guess he was just interested in that for some reason. And then yeah, it was like he was casing the joint so he could steal the toys later. That's what it looked like. Cause yeah. he's just like peering around, like checking out this random shit. It's like okay, I thought whatever. I thought you had a mission here. Why are you checking out <laughs> toys? But and then. He tries to wake up Joshua. Joshua won't wake up. So then, and you, you know something's a really good movie when the character says what they're going to do before they do it, or they express oh, yeah. the they have as they're feeling it. <laughs> you know it's a good movie. So he's like, oh, I think this might work. And then he does this weird thing where he throws like a ball of energy, I guess like spirit energy at Joshua's face, yep. which then wake up. Child abuse. Okay. I guess, and then, <laughs> so then he just like, basically like, he, he acts like he's like he, he acts like he's done this before. Like he's like a, he's gonna abduct a child, and he's like he's like saying all the weird things that like an abductor would say too. He's like, I want to take you on a little trip, and mm-hmm. then he's like, Oh, where are you going? He's like, Oh, I can't tell you that till we get there. Mm, red flag number one, and 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 uh, and, and, and and red flag. Number two is if anybody <laughs> introduces themselves as Christopher Andrew Eugene Bazzani <laughs> and then says, just call me Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Don't trust him. He's a liar. <laughs> yeah. And that's the other thing, too. He goes, you trust me, don't you? It's like he just met you 30 seconds ago <laughs> and you're a wolf ghost stand creature. Why should it? Mind you, 
Joshua looks, I mean, it's hard to tell because they're anthropomorphic lions, but I'm, I'm, I'm ranking Joshua at maybe at, at the oldest, like eight years old. Yeah, he's like maybe 10 at the most, in my opinion. It's, but yeah. it's um, yeah. The other thing too is that they're all like nude because they probably couldn't animate clothes on people because it would take too long or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, they don't show anything. It's just that they're just, you know, maybe, like, no... maybe that's why they didn't make them humans because then they would have been just walking around naked humans. Yeah. So, I mean, but, you know, other yeah. animals have genitalia too. So I'm not sure why that would make it different. But yeah, I think, it, I think it was mainly just because they didn't, he didn't want to animate clothes. It would take too long. So he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then, uh, so then Chris, holds his hand and they go like they go through like warp speed or something into like the past and we're seeing the moment where the pharaoh and his army tried to catch up with the hebrews and then they're drowned by the the red sea or the sea of reeds according to some interpretation and then and then this where it gets really weird i mean it's already weird to begin with so joshua just like 10 seconds ago, was nervous about going on this trip. Now that he's there, he immediately wants to like talk and to meet and meet Moses. So, yeah, but before that, there's like this big light of God thing or something. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, Chris says, you know, hu- humans can't touch that or whatever, even though you're not really human, but um, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you'll die or something like that. And he's like, let me touch it. He just keeps saying, like, it's like, I, I'm i pretty sure Joshua is suicidal. No, oh, he's he's definitely a psychopath and, yeah. and like, a fear killer in the making. Totally. Uh-huh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> As we'll see throughout this film, he, he he gets used to his new life way too quickly. And yeah. uh, um, and he kills animals at a young age, much like uh, serial killers, so. Well, he is an animal, though, so I guess it's... Well, he's killing anim- other animals, out, but, so, yeah. I mean... Well, yeah, true. <laughs> so... So he wants to meet Moses, but he can't do that yet until Chris, I don't know how else to describe this, um, it's definitely not biblical as far as I know, <laughs> is that he takes Joshua's like spirit and puts him into the body of an adult male lion and then just like does like a, you know, John Malkovich type of thing, I guess, and just like takes over and <laughs> like now... He controls this lion's body, I guess. Like that's just him. The the Joshua from the Bible. Yeah. So this is where it gets weird. All right. So this this is where I he you know, this is very much like a fundamentalist Christian film, or at least trying to be. But now we're introducing some really weird extra biblical stuff to it because now because the Joshua character from the Bible (laughs) is a real character from the bible yeah whether or not he is a real person i don't know but he is a person in the bible (laughs) and now we're being told that this kid joshua carter from our time who has parents that argue with each other or stupid stuff is put into the body of the joshua from the bible (laughs) but then becomes the Joshua from the Bible through the deeds he does. So does that mean that the Joshua from the Bible was just like a regular dude at first? And then the spirit of the child Joshua from 2004 entered into his body via a dreamscape. And then that is the Joshua that we read in the Bible. So is Joshua Carter from 2004's Joshua and the Promised Land animation film from Fountain Distribution and the Messianic Synagogue, that's that's who we're reading now about. I think that would be considered blasphemy by most um, yes. most typical scholars. But hey, hey, maybe Jim Lyon got a revelation from Moses or something to say it's okay to to kind of do like a revisionist. <clears throat> well, they they maybe should have had the narrator who explained a bunch of things that didn't need explaining. Explain yeah. that to us because the narrator informs the audience of obvious things. Yeah. Like he points out, this is a pyramid. It's like, yeah, we know. Yeah. Um, Being enslaved is bad. He's like, oh, the Pharaoh army is about to be drowned. Like, yeah, we know. We yeah. see the water surrounding them. What the fuck? And then so. And that's how he talks, like, too. He's like, this is a pyramid. 
Yeah, he's got this I'm... weird voice. By the way, he says where with a where. I hate that. I, yeah. I immediately want to murder him just for that alone. <laughs> like, you got to have, like, perfect diction, really? Fuck you. <laughs> like, you know, and then, uh, like, you stupid purple pig bow tie. Bow tie. Bow, like, bow tie wearing motherfucker. God, I can't talk. And, uh, <laughs> so, 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 um, so Joshua Spirit is now. Or Joshua Spirit via the Dreamscape is now in the body of Joshua via anthropomorphic bipedal lion. Yeah. Animation. And then immediately Moses like just decides to like make him his right hand man, even though he doesn't know anything about him. And, so 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 um, my my feeling is that this movie is actually just a sequel to Big. It could um, be actually. Um that- <laughs> Yeah, because he did look a little bit like that Zortan or whatever his name was. Uh, yeah, the Zoltan or whatever, yeah. He did have yeah. that kind of like, that rugged look about, no. Yeah, but then, my, my uh, thing is, is, you know, because Joshua becomes an adult. Yeah. When he really shouldn't be. And then does adult type things that he really shouldn't be doing. And, I mean, like, he doesn't commit adultery like, you know, like Captain Big where, where yeah, the woman exactly. out molest her. But, um, mm-hmm. so... So don't worry, he 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 wasn't the victim of that, but he did commit genocide as an eight year old boy. So I guess at least you know, he wasn't the, as far as we know because he was there for forty fucking years. That's the other thing too. So in an afternoon, ha- um, there's there's like a whole Inception <laughs> thing going on here, which is weird because this movie came out about five years before Inception, there maybe six. Yeah, and uh, so we get this um thing where the. So obviously the Pharaoh and his army are drowned, but there are sharks in the water, which I don't remember the Bible ever saying anything about that. <laughs> and then I don't even know if sharks even exist in that. It, it's singing. That's one of the weird things about this movie and a lot of movies too, is that there's animals that are anthropomorphic and then there's animals that aren't. I think in the yeah. same movie. They're... It's weird. And like, also, there, there, too, there's a big one later that I'll bring up, but it's just... Oh, yeah, it, totally. Yeah. And also, too, when the Pharaoh... By the way, the Pharaoh and his army are all black, so that's uh-huh. interesting. And then, uh... But... And the Pharaoh's sitting down on his throne. Behind him is ancient Egyptian art of humans behind yeah. him. Which is weird, because a lot of ancient Egyptian art in real life, they'll have, like, depictions of cats in the background. But here... It looks like they're cat people, and the humans are the background. So is the humans like the pets of the cat pharaoh or the cat pharaoh army? I don't know. They, they didn't animate any, so it's hard to say. <laughs> and their reader didn't explain that, which, again, that would be another cool thing to explain. So Now now, now I'm just picturing, did you ever see the the, the movie This is the End or whatever? The, yeah, I've seen yeah, movie, yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I'm just picturing Channing Tatum in a dog collar. <laughs> That's right. That movie's so crazy. Yeah. It's bizarre. <laughs> and uh, I got to see that again. It's been and... a while. But uh, so, I mean, man, like, I don't know, like, so Joshua witnesses an entire army being drowned and eaten alive by sharks. And again, he's probably like eight to 10 years old at this point. And this is, he sees this. And Chris brought him on this journey away from his home, which, you know, yeah, you know, home life sucks and everything, but. Pretty sure you and your parents argue about like working on the car is not as traumatic as watching an army drown and being devoured alive by sharks when you're eight or ten years old. But and it, then it's okay because the animation was bad, so it he, was did, fine. he didn't yeah. really see that much. Well, <laughs> so Moses immediately wants to make Joshua his right hand man, and the only reason why is because he caught him a quail. But the most awkward animation ever. Like he's like bending over in this weird way, as he like he's not even like he's not even like crawling around. Like he's and like hopping on his feet. Like it it just seems like it. I'm I don't want to be totally blasphemous, but this this version of Moses seems like he wants to get with Joshua. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> like it's just weird of how quickly he's like. Oh, I want you to set up your tent and be by my side at uh, all times. And he's like, uh, I can't do that. And he's like, okay, as you wish. And, and like, Chris is like, oh, like, you totally blew it, man. And he's like, oh, it's it's because I don't have a tent. That, and he's like, and Moses is like, oh, 
that's no problem. I can give you a 10. And I'm like, the dialogue is so perfect. I mean, like, th- this was the first time he was resistant to anything before he was fine to have a stranger just take him, you know, through his ceiling into some weird world. Yeah, it's only when yeah. Moses, who's an actual person at this point, not just a weird static-y creature, then all of a sudden now he's he's like, oh, I got a reservation. <laughs> so immediately he is, uh, takes Joshua up to the mountain to get stone tablets this is after the the original voice of God told him different laws, but he went up there to get the tablets anyway so that they would forget. And, oh, my God. So then Moses just like, all right, just wait here. Just leaves Joshua by himself for like 40 days. So just sitting around waiting on Moses to come back. And then as they come back, this is the best part of the movie, as they come back down, this is where you get the famous scene of where they're worshiping the golden calf. And Moses just straight up screams, no. <laughs> like you hear just terrible singing in the background and like the like the, the coolest looking rave party ever. Like the way these animals are dancing is like the funniest thing ever. Like I wish I could show you a visual of it. It's just hilarious. And well, I, I recommend everybody watch this movie. It's it's the movie yes. it's, it's like it's it's un, un, unironically it's a perfect film. It's so good. I mean and then so Moses just like completely loses his mind. By the way, this is also in the Bible itself, where he takes the golden calf, he breaks it down, and then he turns it, grinds it into a dust. He then boils it into hot water and then forces the people who worship the calf to drink it. So they're drinking gold dust, which I'm pretty sure would kill them. I'm thinking this is a little um, almost as bad. As Jim Jones and the Flavor Aid, I'm just saying it is. It's pretty bad. I'm pretty sure that alone would have killed them. But in the Bible, it's actually much worse because you know, this being a kids' movie, I guess ostensibly, <laughs> even though there's, there's like so much fighting in this movie, I don't know how. I'm not sure who movie. this movie's for. So yeah, this movie is for like I think people on like a drug trip is what I think it's for. And then, uh, and then so in the Bible though, it's much different. He he does make him drink the weird, you know, sand or gold dust or whatever. But then he makes the the men who did not worship the golden calf to kill the other men who did worship the golden calf because they broke one of the biggest commandments, which is to not worship idols. But so my question is, if Moses was already going to command a mass execution. Why did he make him drink the hot gold water first? Was that just like an extra layer of like barbarity or something? Like, yes. Like, I mean, I'm guessing so. I mean, and uh, and and for some odd reason, this book is allowed in schools. Oh yeah, of course. But 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 a book with uh with mice representing um you know Jewish people and Nazis and talking about how bad you know Hitler was is not for some reason. Yeah. Or anything with a drag queen. Or with like a gay character or a trans character, yeah. Even if those characters are not Bad. even at all sexualized, yeah. they're just regular mm-hmm. characters in the book. Like, you know, then that's like, yeah, you know, our children can't read this. <clears throat> it's, it's, but hey, Moses telling people, oh, these people worship a different god than you, so you should murder them. But before you do that, make them drink this disgusting boiling gold water first, and then kill them. Totally With boiling gold water. He ran for president, didn't he? Boy, that's a good band name, boiling gold water, <laughs> or like a song title or something. Yeah. And then, um, so again, Joshua is here to witness all of this. Again, he's like eight years old, and then he's like, "All right, I want you to now command my army." Again, he's eight years old. He has not seen him fight at all, and he just decides to now lead his army against the Amalekites who were one of the biggest um, enemies of the Hebrews at that time. Uh, they had a huge, huge army, way more advanced than the Hebrews. You know, more men, but also better weaponry, you know, you name it. And then um, Joshua gives a speech. He's like, all right, let's beat these guys. I'm like, uh, okay. And then he's like, okay, um, if God fights with us, then 
who can fight against us? And everyone's like, yeah. You know, like it was like the most inspiring speech of all time. It, it was, was, like, it was bit... right up there with that scene in Braveheart. Oh, um, yeah. So, <laughs> like, no, but William Wallace has nothing on Josh, you know, <laughs> little kid Joshua here and it's fucking adult <laughs> mind body that he's taken over <laughs> of this poor soul. That's the other thing, too. So, like, if we want to get into theology here, if the soul is not necessarily, like, a part of a person's body, yeah, but still resides in it in a sort of weird way, does that mean that the other Joshua is, like, essentially, like, entrapped in his own body, and he knows that this kid Joshua is taking control of his body, but he can't do anything about See, it? See, I'm wondering if it's, so, like, a quantum leap type thing. Where, yeah, like, it could be too. Like, like, yeah, like, I mean, like where they're 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 holding other Joshua in some kind of like holding yeah. place, yeah, like maybe. in in the present. And <laughs> yeah, maybe know. that's happening. Yeah. I don't know. So then they go, they completely like decimate the Amalekites. And like, there's like this cool tiger soldier, which is like he should have been like the real a uh, leader of the army because this yeah. guy is like he knows like karate, which I don't think they even taught karate at that part of the world at that time. But, like, again, since we don't care about facts right now. Oh, yeah. He's, like, doing his spin kicks. He's, like, he's, like, taking on. He could on just like accidentally four... know it, too, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he's taking on, like, four at a time, like, kicking them. He's stabbing them. He's got them, like, he's, like, cornered by four, and he's, like, doing all these trip moves. He also, like, picks up Joshua at one point, <laughs> and he, like, points towards, like, a carriage, and they're, like, awesome they jump on the horses of a moving carriage the tiger dude cuts off the carriage and then both of them just literally just ride their horses into the middle of the battle and okay. they're just like swiping away with their swords at these amalekites by the way these are all black as well uh, and, and, which is interesting and, and again these are animals yeah riding animals yeah, see, these the horses are 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 regular; they're not bipedal, and yeah. uh, and they're they're green for some reason. I'm not sure why. And uh, so, green horses, and you got Joshua. I don't know what the general's name is, but this guy's a badass. Like he should have been the real leader of the army. I don't know why uh, Moses chose this little kid. What to be fair, he didn't know he was a little kid no. in the, the body of a grown <laughs> lion, but still. Obviously, a tiger shows more military prowess and strategy than J Joshua does. And also, too, the fact that uh, this tiger, not once, not one time does this tiger ever vie for leadership. He knows no. he's better a fighter, better fighter than Joshua. He still knows his place. That's the person you want to lead your army. Yeah, You don't want someone who's too big for their britches. You want someone who is as good as that guy is, but also as humble as that guy but is. But to be fair, nobody's wearing britches. Well, true, because yeah. of the tigers. But yeah, but then <laughs> there's tiger, lions, tigers, and bears, if, I believe, in this army, actually. And, um, oh, my. Oh, oh my. my. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of bears, you get, these, you get these bear creatures who have, like, these huge hammers, and they're just, like, knocking back these Am Amalekites. Like, I mean, like, uh -huh. just crazy. They're just, like, knocking them down... <laughs> And and again, like, this is a like, kids movie. They can't kids. There's no blood, but still, <laughs> a kids movie. They completely decimate this army. I mean, like everyone's dead basically. And then they're like, "Yeah, woo! Our God is better than their God. Our God, let us kill them. Yeah, you know, because that's like you know, a, you know, like a Super Bowl team type of mentality. Yeah, of like my God, let me kill your people. So that means your God is false, bro." Okay, and um, so here's where it gets really fucked up, though. So after the Amalekite slaughter, which to be fair, they were attacked. They were defending themselves. Yeah. You're allowed to you're allowed to kill people in self defense. Fine, it's fair. <laughs> and uh, but the next part is not so fair because this is where we get to the infamous story of Jericho. Now, for those of you who have not read the Bible especially the Old Testament, and I don't blame you if you have not, because it's very hard to get through. There is a story, especially the Old Old Testament, talking like the very early books, there is violence galore. There's blood 
all through the pages of this book, which again is allowed in schools, public schools. Um, but children need to be away from that material. And um is that there's a group of people who live there and God promised the Hebrews that that land belongs to them. And the only and they but only they can live there. So they can't share the land. So it's not a case of Oh, we'll go in there and we'll just make ourselves at home and maybe they'll take us in and, you know, we'll, we'll sort of just integrate into the community and we'll all, you know, be one big happy family. No, uh, only the Hebrews are allowed to live there. Okay. Well, there's a word for that and it's called genocide. Um, that's not my word. Uh -huh. I'm not making that up that the Bible itself is explaining what is happening, which is by definition genocide. Now you could say. Oh, it's anti-Semitic to say that. You can't say, well, no, the Bible itself is saying what's going yeah. to happen. If you don't like it, blame the Bible. Uh, you know, uh, don't get mad at me for saying what's truthful. So um, so Joshua and a few other, I think the Tiger Dune, uh, were sent there to uh, spy uh, on the city to see, you know, what's going on. You know, I'm guessing to also yeah, see. Yeah, here's where it gets funny to me. <laughs> They're yeah. in this town. All the people living in that town are these red, black uh -huh. horned, uh -huh. like bull type creatures. Yet yep. they have cows. Again, it's because some animals just don't get to be bipedal. But, you but know, it's like, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's the whole goofy Pluto thing of it all. Like, you're the same type of animal. I know. And yet one of you is like a pet. Or cattle, and the other one's not. Yep. <laughs> it's just it's no, weird to me. And on top of that, too, nobody's like freaking out that you know it's like this whole town of red creatures, and this lion just walks in. Yeah. Who looks nothing like anybody else? It's like, oh, that must be you know, you know, uh, Joe's second cousin. He, you know. Which wasn't out in the sun as long as us or something. You know, right. like what what are they thinking? Well, so that makes it worse, right? So going by that logic, so that's a really good point. Go so going by that logic, they see a foreigner in their land and they're like, ah, that's cool. We're tolerant. We're all okay with that. But they are like, We gotta kill these people. Uh -huh. So wait a bit. They let you in their land, no problem whatsoever. Just go mingle around, do as you please. No problem. Yeah, they're sacrificing the baby, supposedly. Which again, yeah. okay, so not to go like at an anti-Bible right here, but there's a long, and I mean a long standing propaganda tool of every group of people who have committed atrocities against someone else saying, these people are so evil, they were, they were sacrificing children. We had to do what we had to do. So, I mean, the Christians were saying that about the Jews in Europe. And the ancestors yeah. of these Jews were saying this about the people of Jericho. So this is yep. a long-standing thing where you justify murder or genocide by saying, well, these people <laughs> were just so bad. They were terrible. Well, it's, it's like the manifest doing... destiny sort of thing of the United well, States. Well, it is. Where, it's like, you, you know... had to do this. We're yeah. the pure ones. God's on our side. And uh, plus, interesting enough, so they're all, like you said, they're all red, right? Well, what did the, what did the Christian colonizers say? About Native Americans, uh -huh. they used to call them the Red Men, uh -huh. the Red Men, right? Yeah. And they said, what they say about them? They said, oh, they're 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 savages. They they do human sacrifices. They worship false gods. They worship idols. They they live like animals, etc. You know that's and they justified that. They that's... used that to then kill these people, which it, ironically, it, including the children of these people, but their justification. For doing so was saying, well, these people harm and kill their children. Yeah. So we need to kill their children to stop them from killing their children. That's that's how it works. It, no, it, literally, which, it's how it works. Which, so... which, 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 which brings up the fact that in this movie, we saw all but the sacrifice of a baby. Yeah, we saw them lift up the baby. We heard them screaming. Yeah. Again, a children's movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, say, say what you want about... Uh, about sh the Shrek films. <laughs> yeah. There, there were no baby murders in them. 
There were no baby sacrifices. No, no serene. <laughs> no. Oh. Yeah. I don't so, remember a Madagascar Josh, movie or an Ice Age or, uh, or, or, or an Incredibles movie where there were baby sacrifices. You remember that that deleted scene in, in Ice Age where they froze an the animal <laughs> and they just broke in the piece and just killed it? It was brutal, man. They had to cut it. It was too, it was going to make it into like a rated R movie from that one scene alone. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, and the creepy thing about this is that Joshua's facial expression at this is just one of like, like yeah. nothing. Like there's no, like there's no expression at all. Like he's not even terrified. He just walks away yeah. like nothing happened. And he, then Chris. He, 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 uh, he was looking at it and like, like, uh, like the look you see on somebody who walks into a Starbucks and there just happens to be a guy playing guitar up front. And you're like, oh, that's interesting. That's what it was. And yeah. Like, yeah it's, it's, it's just like this weird that he walks away. <laughs> Again, he doesn't run away. He just walks out like, oh, that was interesting. Uh -huh. And then he's at by a campfire. And Chris, the staticky, weird static ghost creature, whatever he is, he you know he can see that something's wrong. So finally, <laughs> Joshua is processing more trauma. Okay, so again, Joshua's about eight years old at this point. <laughs> and well, no, actually, technically, so there was the forty. So here's the other thing. So they were going to go to no, never mind. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. <laughs> so they did spy on them first. So he's about eight years old at this point. So he's already witnessed the Pharaoh and his army being drowned and devoured alive by sharks. He also took place in a battle where they killed an entire art of army of Amalekites. And then now he's being told to spy on another group of people and he has to commit genocide against them. And Chris, the static ghost wolf angel creature, tells them, well, you know, you have to do it because they're bad. So, you know, they killed babies, right? So sometimes, you know, which is the other weird thing. So the Ten Commandments are supposed to be brand new, right? They just came uh -huh. out. What's that? I said, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, new release, you know, just came out of the press, you know, vinyl, you know, going out I mean, to the they're, store. They're, they're right? still on the New York Times bestseller list, you know. Yeah, sort so, of, yeah. Um, yeah. so nobody knows about this, this these commandments except for the Hebrews who happen to be with them. Mind you, not all the Hebrews actually lived with Moses at that time. Some of them lived in other places who were descendants of Abraham. So not even they know of the existence of Moses, let alone yeah. of these new commandments. All they know about is that they were descendants of Abraham. They may have been passed down some kind of religious knowledge from Abraham going back, you know, thousands of years. They don't know much, though. They don't, they don't know about these laws, but yet they are technically considered Hebrews. But so the only people who know about this are the people with Moses at that time. And Chris goes, well, you know, they're testing the will of God and breaking his laws. But nobody knows about those laws except for the people who's about to commit genocide against them. So they don't get a chance to follow the laws of God? I okay. Yeah, um, it's okay. That's interesting, but it's all like right. The, the laws only apply to certain people, I guess. Well, th yeah, according to Judaism, <laughs> the the law, like all the like six hundred thirteen laws, only they, you know, are required of, of Jews. Everyone else only has to follow seven. They call the seven laws of Noah. So everyone else pretty much gets like easy street. You know, all the the Jews gotta follow this huge. <laughs> You know, yeah, and, uh, and the whole "thou shalt not kill" thing of it, it all is like what, just they, yeah. But they don't even get anything out of it. They don't even get like extra rewards for it either. So it's not like oh, we took the hard way out, we get like better treasures. No, you don't even get that. So it's like literally no winning deal out of that. It's just like you take the hard way out. That's it. There's no reason for it. But like, so they got so Joshua's like, yeah, he's still he's still uneasy. He's like, well, yeah, they might be evil. And they did sacrifice that baby, but I still don't really feel right about genocide. So other people were like, man, they're like, we're not doing that. So then that's when God forces them to wander the desert for 40 years. So mind you, Joshua is experiencing this dreamscape in real time. Yeah. So Joshua might only be asleep for like maybe a half hour to an hour. He's experiencing 40 years of his life in a dream. Yeah, and that, and then then yeah. you know, and then the next day he's got to go to social studies class or something. You know, it's like yeah, um, he's probably going to ace that test, mind you. And uh, well, he he and, definitely. I mean, I don't know. I mean, unless it's all just about the one 
portion of the oh, Bible. Oh, true. Yeah, Bible. Yeah. <laughs> His Bible history class, he's yeah, going to run. He's going to be good, but then they'll, they'll be like, you know, so, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln, what? Uh, yeah. Like, tell me about Joshua from the Bible. It's like, oh, I got this. Yeah. Uh, the only way he's going to learn Josh- anything in the future is he's got to, you know, leap into the bodies of all these famous people. And yeah. then, um, you know. Yeah, Chris can help him out with that. And, and, uh, and maybe one day wish just... that the next leap will be the leap home. Oh, wait. Ooh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. They should do that, actually. They should do, like, a sequel where this this Chris guy takes them into, like, the ah. different bodies of different historical figures and just has them act out what they're supposed to act out, which then means, though, that those people are actually the people who did those things. It's Joshua who's living inside their body. That's doing those things, but okay. Maybe we that's should just limit it to famous people named Joshua. Yeah, every had just like Joshua Radin, like the guitarist musician from <laughs> Scrubs. Yeah. Like, um, like yeah. I'm no Superman. Yeah, like, I'm no Joshua man or no Josh. Yeah, he's gonna man. jump into Josh Radner and have to relive all of How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> or with Josh, uh, Josh Brolin or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. he's gonna <laughs> with, with Josh Brolin. Was that Thanos? And, yeah, uh, he's gonna be Thanos. Well, interesting because there are some Thanos moments in this movie, mm-hmm. actually, ironically. So that would be a good uh, yeah. crossover. But uh, so you know, so Joshua is probably like mentally like around forty-eight years old now, and he's because he's wandering the desert. Finally, you know, they've been thoroughly indoctrinated to believe that it's, it's okay to commit genocide now. It took us forty years to finally be brainwashed into thinking it's fine to murder an entire group of people who already live in another land and we're just going to take it over and kill them all. Not even, That's the other thing too. Why, so like most people, this is why like the Bible really like irks me, like the Old Testament at least. Yeah, I know Jewish scholarship, you know, tends to kind of whitewash it a little bit, but like, well, yeah. technically they didn't really kill people. It only says that in the Bible, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, but the fact that it even says that happened... <laughs> That's still problematic. <laughs> Whether or not it really happened, that's fine. It's academic. But, like, people who read this believe this was true. And nobody ever thought to disabuse them of that notion. So that's... Well, and, and it's like the the, 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 no. the the thing with humans is we don't want to see our heroes kill people. Yeah. Like, like even watching, like, a like, like a TV show or something, and you, you start to think that, you know, your main actor or group of people in the show are going to have to murder somebody you're just like but they're the good guys you know well that's the thing too and again it doesn't make you see it's not even an issue of them like even chris is like he's sitting there trying to literally like brainwash joshua into accepting that's the thing too in order to commit genocide you have to be brainwashed into thinking it's okay because most people unless you're just like a raving psychopath serial killer aren't gonna just like immediately think that's okay like like you're gonna need to be taught why that act should be done and it's usually based off of lies and so again like the baby sacrifice thing again this goes throughout all of history every time a group of people wanted to attack another people they always said that they were doing something to children now we get the QAnon people same thing it's the same oh, yeah. story every single time it's the blood, blood libel of it all yeah it is the blood libel just goes back just thousands probably perhaps even millions of years to some degree and you know I'm not trying to make this his- historical thing but it's just I mean what is a historical film even though it's ridiculous but uh and so these people didn't pose any threat to them they posed no harm whatsoever they, they, there was no reason why they couldn't have just asked if they could live there with them. And if, and then at that point, if they're like, no, you can't stay with us. And now we're going to attack you for even asking. Okay. Now you can fight them because it's self-defense, but to just be like, no, we're yeah. not even willing to share the land that someone else already lives. in. we have to kill them all and raise the entire city into rubble. And just build, because that's the other thing too. The Bible literally says that that no living creature was allowed to be left alive. Like they had to completely burn the entire city to the ground, even kill so, animals. Because... So um, th- there is a there is a fourteen minute deleted scene from this movie. Oh really? Yeah, I found online, and uh, found uh, somebody talking about it online too. Wow. Um. 
so so a couple of the couple of the guys on on uh you know on Joshua's team and Moses' mm-hmm. team go to the city when they're spying. Yeah. That aren't that aren't um aren't Joshua or Chris. They're just like okay. these two random okay. creatures. Um they go to the <laughs> city and they're looking for somewhere to stay where they're in the town. They go to a brothel. Um uh, and there's a prostitute who basically offers them, doesn't say the words, but basically says, well, you could have some more fun. I completely uh, see why they deleted the scene. And then she she harbors them there uh, and um, keeps them there. They, they, they don't, you know, partake of her services. Hey. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really weird. And then, like, the... And and then like the the king's guards come looking for the for the for the spies, and uh, she distracts them by basically offering the same thing to them. So she, so she protected them. Yeah. And then her reward forty years later is to be no. Have gen- and, and here's the thing: in the original movie, she is spared. Oh well, okay. Because she <laughs> cuts a deal with them, so. It's still in the um, in in the in in the final cut. There's one building that doesn't get destroyed when everything else is turned to rubble. I noticed that. Yeah, that is her her residence. Okay, that's her house. I was wondering. Yeah, I did see like a red thing looking out the window. Yeah, I that didn't was know. her. That so that makes no. I mean, now it, it makes, makes no sense, sense like, in the in the current iteration of that's the film. That's fucking up. Yeah. That's so fucked up, dude. <laughs> yeah, so she's fair because she did one nice thing. They're like, all right, we'll spare you. We'll yeah. kill everyone else. But, um, including the children that we're here to save. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's where that story comes from. I mean, Joshua commits genocide. And again, you know, Jewish scholarship says, well, it didn't really happen. Later on in the Bible, it actually says that these, these people... <laughs> lived in the land with them, so there could have been no genocide. Otherwise, why would they live there? And again, that's not the point. The point is that someone wrote that as though it did happen and taught people that this thing happened and it was a good thing that it happened. Yeah. Like, by that logic, that's like someone saying, like, did you know that um, in 1957, um, somebody murdered a Jewish guy in Texas and it was awesome and it was a great thing that happened? And it turns out that that event never happened. Does that make it better that the fact that this is still being taught to people as though it's a good thing that you should emulate? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, it, 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 you know it's I mean? kind of like, it's kind of like the 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 uh, the tightrope with uh, even though I mean I, I'm guilty of watching some of these types of shows or listening to these podcasts and stuff, but the 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 whole um, true crime obsession of nowadays, where yeah, it, even though it is true, or or people that will watch a movie, you know, fictional or not. That um, glorifies or they, they they identify with like like so, somebody watching the Joker and identifying with the Joker, my God, yeah, which is not really what the point of the movie was, but some but a lot of people watch it and that's the way they see things, and no, somehow I know that's okay it. because it's fictional, you know. No, it's... the point of the Joker was to show how. Society can break a man, yeah. but you're not supposed to identify with. Or I mean, if understanding do, with, him, and you do identify with him in some p- parts, but yeah. to but to like identify him to the point where you see him as the hero, right? Because what what you're supposed to get out of it is like, oh, society <laughs> broke this man to the point that he became this monster. Maybe we should be better to people. That's what you're supposed to get out of the movie. Yeah, or or, or like or like a movie that was that highly. Um, influenced uh joker like if you watch taxi driver and you think uh that that travis bickle is the hero you're missing right the point no too. way you know right. what i mean yeah well because he ended up killing the guys that were gonna like yeah pimping out a girl or whatever but still but still he's not the it's it's more it's more society that's the villain and mm-hmm. he's like one of the conduits of society yeah, plus he was not innocent himself. He was stalking that girl. That's what I'm too. saying. That's why I'm yeah, saying pre- he, he's, yeah. it's yeah. it's society that influenced him, same as uh same as the Joker. Um, but that's for another podcast. So um, <laughs> Oh my god. 
<laughs> but, oh my god! But yeah, so, and, and so, so so we we get this end where there's like this big like head or something in the sky. It, uh, when we're back in the town, those angels broke down the wall. Yeah. But they're... It was just too confusing, the animation. I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. I don't understand what's going on. You know, these angels show up and they break. Also, too, I think this is also from the Bible. So they were probably just absolutely fucking with the minds of the, I don't know, they were called the Jericonians. I don't know what their name was, the Canaanites. <laughs> I know the Canaanites are one. I don't know yeah. if it's the same. So I'm not, I don't want to screw up my history here, you know, from this glorious movie. Do you remember movie. that TV show, Jericho? That was a good show. Yeah, I remember the TV show, yeah. Oh, so the Jericonians. Yeah, that's, um, that's totally off topic, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a different show, different, totally yeah. different show, but uh, a... much better than this one, mm. but uh, <laughs> even though that one's not biblical, but um, yeah. <laughs> and so they, um, they circle around the perimeter six days in a row um, with I think this is also in the Bible with the ark. Another, another interesting, another I can't talk. Another interesting thing about that. So Moses makes the people drink the golden boiling water or the boiling gold water, if you will, for worshiping the golden calf. And almost immediately, they build this thing called the Ark of the Covenant, which is always has to be carried around in battle. Because they believe that, like, the spirit of God resides within that thing? Wouldn't yeah. that be kind of <laughs> idol? I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, so what the real problem was, I'm guessing, this is just my speculation. I'm not a historian, not a religious historian, although I have studied it, but I'm, not, I'm just saying I'm not a scholar. My speculation is that perhaps the golden calf was an idol to another god yeah. from another nation, and Moses didn't like that because that wasn't his god. Uh -huh. So it wasn't so much that the idol was the problem; it was the wrong idol for the wrong god. And then, so, it, then it went on to uh, inspire the mascot of movies. So it's okay. Yeah, mascot of movies like the movies, movies you know, like the restaurant and uh, the Kevin yeah, Smith restaurant universe. movies, which is the reason why in Dogma they had to kill the golden because it was like you know, yeah. literally a calf, you know, that they were worshiping. Yeah, and the man Damon had to kill him, and uh, and then and, and then the Ark of the Covenant. Well, that was you know, Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones found that, it, so we're we're yeah. all good. We're all good. So so they're carrying, they're circling the perimeter for six days in a row, every day. And then on the last day, they do it seven times on that same day. So the Jerichodians have to be like, freaking out, like, what's going on? What are they doing here? This is bizarre. <laughs> also, that goes out to 13. And then in Jewish mysticism, 13 is actually a really sacred number. Yeah. So I don't know if that had something to do with that or if that was like maybe antecedents towards that thing because 13 uh, basically means like almost like the like the absolute, like, like the, almost, I, I get the absolute being of God where it's like pretty much like nothingness. Like, so yeah. it's like almost like, it's almost like going to like the end of the universe essentially, but like with God. So I don't know if that's had something to do with it because 13 is an odd number. So I'm pretty sure that has something to do with it. So finally, you know, they're about to fight and, you know, of course the Jericonians are laughing like, ha, 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 they can't beat us, blah, 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 or whatever. And then these weird angels, huge angels with big hammers, show up, and they start just beating the shit out of these walls, just completely decimating the entire city, like all yeah. the buildings gone, except for that one video of the prostitute, you know, not video, that one building of the prostitute. You know, she was spared because she offered to have sex with an eight-year-old child. Uh, but, no, but no, no, it wasn't, with, it wasn't with Joshua. Oh, it was, okay. It was... To be fair, she didn't know anyway. So yeah, it, but it, it wasn't with him. It was with the other two uh, spies. It was with two spies, not Joshua right. or Chris. Well, so, I'm yeah. saying, I'm saying, even if it was, yeah, it, it wouldn't. It would be like a big situation. Where yeah, she didn't know. You know, so <laughs> there'd be like some gray area there. But good thing they didn't even open that can of on just, yeah. you know, and uh, yeah. So it's so a good thing they cut out, is, out of the movie altogether. So yeah. yeah. Hmm. So fairly. So that 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 does that did confuse me. Why I just see this one building? I'm like, okay. Yeah. So why is that one? So then, I'm sorry if I've been talking way too long, dude. I didn't mean to. It's okay. I, I didn't mean to like ruin this, like like rambling so much. But so, do you want to talk about the big reveal of like the demon head or whatever? That yeah. Happened? So so he 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 gets like zapped back to his regular 
bedroom in modern day after living, you know, like 45 years somewhere else. And, <laughs> um, you know, living like a whole lifetime somewhere. And, um, yeah. hey, there, there's like a random demon head just kind of floating around in his bedroom, you know, like most kids have. And, mm-hmm. um, but most kids don't know to pull up, to pick up their, their sword and cut mm-hmm. it in half. And then the two halves will turn into stone that crumbles in your hands. Uh, it, but, and by the way, this demon head was from the dreamscape that, so, so Joshua was in a dream and he was living the dream for 40 years after they committed genocide against the Jericonians, except for the one prostitute, this demon appeared out of like a one of the bricks that was from one of the buildings and then followed them yeah. out of the dream. But then not only that, Joshua comes back and he's still like in a quasi dream within the dream where he's in his bed talking to Chris. Yeah. And then he wakes up for real. So he's in a dream within a dream. And then the demon had followed him from the dream into the real world yeah somehow in physical space uh, what and then and then he yeah he killed it I, I i seriously think that josh was mentally ill to be honest and um i think he should probably be living in the ward for a while um for the trauma probably that maybe his parents his drunk dad what's what i'm saying maybe maybe all of this is really trauma from his parents that he then... And, 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 and I'm talking about his parents, too. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this, but his parents are a same-sex couple. Are they? I didn't know that. I, I'm just saying this because his mom has a mane. Oh, okay. I didn't notice that. And and, 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 and female... No, and, and female lions don't have manes, but they do a lot in animation. So, um... <laughs> I mean, they're bipedal too. So yeah, I mean, I'm just joking. They're not really a same-sex couple. No, but they wouldn't saying. allow that for uh, this movie. I mean, genocide's fine and stuff like that. But <laughs> that's the other thing too. So like, when when Chris was trying to pump up Joshua to commit genocide, when Joshua didn't feel like it, and he was like, "They they murder people. They they commit adultery." And then Joshua was like, "What's that?" And he's like, "Uh, don't worry about that right now." It's like, oh, he can't explain what adultery is because it's sex, but genocide. Eh. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Baby sacrifice. Which, it's fine. That's oh, that's Christian yeah. fundamentalism right there. Uh-huh. Any fundamentalism right there. Sex is worse than killing. It's yep. always the same. Uh, and that's the thing. That's because they're a death cult. Life, creation of life, procreation, literally in the word procreation, is worse than destruction, than killing, uh-huh. because death cults. Um, killing is good. Destruction is good. We need to burn down evil. We need to... Procreation, creating bad, bad, bad. God's the creator. We and don't so, want to be like God. We want to be like the enemy and kill, kill, kill. So, uh, okay. anyways, the, the end of the movie. <laughs> I know. Um, <clears throat> Chris's parents are, like, fighting at the dinner table. And um, so then Chris comes down and they're like, sit down, Chris. And then he has a smile on his face. And so then they have a smile on their face and they all apologize for yelling at each other. Yeah, with no explanation as to why, just because, just because Josh is smiling. Um, <laughs> that's that's how the movie ends, and that, my only my only loose interpretation of that could be that maybe Joshua just carrying himself with a bit more confidence, so maybe they responded to like his body language. I don't know. That's probably reading. But way it doesn't too much explain in. how it helped the parents' marriage. No, it um, doesn't, and that's the other thing too, because like, oh, now that Joshua has courage, I'm like. But Joshua just went down to sit down for dinner. What what courage is maybe, there? I maybe mean, his I mom's don't, a bad cook. I guess maybe that's what they. I mean, because like, what courage was there to just show up for dinner? And like, and and they're eating animals that were like their neighbors, and that's why he needed. Exactly, the courage they're eating to... their neighbors, cannibalism, <laughs> and and um, and so you're telling me that Joshua had to enter a dreamscape for forty years where he committed genocide against unsuspecting and unthreatening people 
And he also killed the whole army of Amalekites. Granted, self-defense, that's fine. Yeah. And then also witnessed the Pharaoh's army being drowned to death and being alive by sharks. Also, he could have the courage to fight a weird demon head with a wooden sword and then go downstairs and, and save sit his down parents' marriage to eat dinner with them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, I guess. So my, my final thoughts here, and this is not my thoughts, they're actually something I found online about this movie. And it's just a, a comment about Chris. <laughs> our, our Christopher whatever. Uh, yeah, what's his name? Yeah, the guy with the a million names. Anyways, this person says, okay, so Chris encourages Joshua to come with him on a journey and refuses to tell him what it entails. Only mm-hmm. that it will be fun. <laughs> Said journey winds up starving him, nearly <laughs> killing him several times, forcing him to kill, forcing him to wait in solitude for 40 days without food or water, <laughs> and condemning him to spend 40 years walking a desert before Chris finally complies to Joshua's request to take him home. <laughs> this is a kidnapping. Yeah. That took it 40 is. years. <laughs> a 40 year kidnapping where violence was involved. Uh-huh. A lot of violence was involved. Starvation. Uh, I mean, oh, that's another thing, too. So, so this movie also it was really creepy in a lot of ways, too. Chris, for one thing, Chris is just creepy no matter what. But so many things Chris said in this movie are like giant red flags. I wonder if they're trying to like almost like incept into like the people's minds to like, <clears throat> like carry out their lives in this way, but not really realizing that's what they're doing. So like, so for example, you know, Chris is telling him, Hey, let me take you on a little trip. I can't tell you where we're going till we get there. You trust me, don't you? He's done him for 30 seconds after throwing a giant energy ball at his face. I mean, the, the only thing he needed to do was like, Instead of traveling through the ceiling, was uh, have a you know a white paneled van with uh, some yeah. puppies or candy inside. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, yeah. So not only that, so that's already giant red flag. But then later on, shortly after that, actually, Josh, Joshua wanted to meet Moses. I don't remember something, and then he goes, "Listen, kid, sometimes a no means a maybe. I'll grant you that." I'm like, "Whoa, okay." So like. Wow, like, yeah. Yep. Now, <laughs> the most charitable, okay, the most charitable interpretation I could give to that, that's if I'm really giving the benefit of the doubt of Mr. Jim Lyon here, is that maybe talking to his parents, like asking him to buy him a toy or something. Yeah, like, like his parents are like, he, he, but, asks, he asks if he can I, watch, uh, you know, the, whatever the, uh, Lion World equivalent of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is in the afternoon, and you know it's like, oh, you got to do your homework first, but you know, you, you got to kill a demon head. Came back, you know, <laughs> you know, your dad's working on the car, a demon head screwing it up. Got to go kill it. So dad can fix his engine. It's always fucking up the engine. Damn, damn demon head. Okay, mom, get uh, my wooden sword. That's oh, what happened my in my dad's car last time. He had to have it. Looked at it, there was a demon head inside the there was a demon head in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it happened. You know, and that, 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 then the thing is, is when the demon head gets bad, you got to order a new one, and usually they have to send it from Japan or something. And then you're like, oh, you know, it's like, or they yeah. got to get Chris to deliver it from five thousand years ago. <laughs> He's got to go through a dreamscape. He's got to go to a dream within a dream. Joshua, mind you, Joshua's probably in his fifties at this point, is absolutely terrified for his <laughs> life and one. Like crazy experience after the next. He's probably on like five thousand milligrams of like you know, um, um, uh, Iroquois or some like shit like that. Yeah, and he's gonna need therapy for sure. Oh, totally, definitely. There's no doubt. I mean, there's there's absolutely no doubt about that. Hopefully, he doesn't get like a fundamental fundamentalist Christian therapist because he's just gonna like yeah. tell him it was great what he did, and that's just gonna feed into his mania. But like, um. As long as he's not lying to his therapist. Like not lying to us exactly. But man, this movie wow. Yes. Uh, I I honestly I'm gonna go I'm gonna try to find this dude's email address or Facebook or whatever. I'm gonna write to him. I'm gonna absolutely 
beg him to make a sequel to this movie. Like, I'll even put some money towards it. If I make some money, I'll actually put like a hundred dollars or something to it. Like, yeah, please, I'm begging you. And don't don't get a team. Do it all by yourself, like you did last time, because the magic won't happen unless it's it, it's all gonna come in your mouth from your mind. Like, <laughs> oh, Joshua and like the broken land, or or something, or like something bad happens, and he has to go back, you know, or who knows, you know, and. We'll, we'll we'll let him figure it out. I just want to hear, yeah, we'll see what he comes up with. Yeah. So, um, anyways, I recommend people, you know, just read the book of Joshua, and um, <laughs> and then watch the movie. Yeah. Because you, you don't order. want you don't want you know the movie to spoil the book for you, and um, I'm pretty sure the book does not have anything about other people's spirits being put in the body of Joshua. Nope. And, it all being a dreamscape, you know. Nope. There's nope. no anthropomorphic lions or panthers or whatever in it either. Um, no. Nope. Anyways, um, any other thoughts here before we wrap things up? No, I, I'm I'm all exhausted just from yeah, talking about. This is a long one. Um. <laughs> anyways, um, folks, um, just remember to kill your demon heads, <laughs> and um. You know, say no to the prostitute in Jericho. And say yes, say no to Jericho and prostitutes. Also, don't drink the boiling gold water. Yeah, don't vote for Barry Goldwater. And um, well, he's dead. So yeah, he I don't think he could become president. Um, <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> ship sailed on that one, huh? Um, <laughs> so wow. um, it sailed on the Goldwater, and um. Yeah. You know, so be good to each other. That's that's one thing, you know. And um, you know, go to all two real two dot com. You can find everything there. Um, subscribe, share the show, and tell your friends. And remember that we love you. And mm-hmm. until next time. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Hawes. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.